Today on Handy Dad TV, I'm going to show you how to wire the most common device in your house, the ordinary 120 volt receptacle. Coming up. If you need shade on your deck or patio this summer, check out Toya Grid Pergola Kits. You source the lumber locally and can assemble this modular system in as little as 30 minutes. Check the video description for links to videos and more information about Toya Grid. Before doing any electrical work, we want to talk about doing it safely. And to do that, you're going to use testers to make sure your power is turned off so that it's safe to work with the wires. Now, there are mixed feelings about these because in order to use this safely, what you want to do is always test it against known voltage. So I'm going to turn it on and it makes a beep when there is voltage. So then you take it and you put it on the circuit you're going to work with and you make sure that if you touch the wires, none of them beep. And that's how you know your circuit breaker is absolutely off and you can touch those wires safely. So today I'm going to be rewiring this receptacle onto these wires and there's multiple ways to do it. I'm going to show you what I would consider the wrong way first and then we'll talk about some other alternatives. Now this is an inexpensive outlet that just you can get at your local big box store and it's got brass screws on the one side and it's got silver screws on the other side and a ground green screw down the bottom. So the way this is wired is always the green screw is going to get the bare copper which is ground and the silver screws which are the way I remember it is the silver is lighter than the brass so the silver screws are the ones that are going to get the white which is the neutral wire and the brass screw is going to have the black which is known as the hot wire. So the first thing I'm going to do is strip these wires and uh, this is a kind of a simple stripping tool that allows me to very quickly strip these wires. There are multiple kinds of strippers out there. This is another kind that I keep in my toolbox. But uh, if I've got these handy, these are my go-to all the time. Now the first way that I'm going to wire these is through these little holes on the back. Now these only work with 14 gauge wires, which is what I'm using here today. So in your house, you're gonna find 14 gauge on 15 amp circuits and you're going to find 12 gauge on 20 amp circuits. So you never know what you're going to be dealing with, but if you are dealing with 14 gauge wire, you can use these little push holes in the back. These are just, they're known as backstab. And all you have to do is push them in to those holes and they grab. There is a strip gauge here that lets you know how much you need to keep there. And I'm just going to cut them, trim them off because I, I went a little bit too long. And you don't want it too long because if it goes too long, it'll stick out and you don't really want it sticking out. So in this case, the white goes in here and the black goes in where the brass is. And then for the ground, you're always going to use the screw for the ground. Now to put the ground on, or use any of the screw terminals, you're going to make a little bit of a J. And the J goes around the screw, and you always want to go towards the right, over the top and to the right. And the reason for that is when you tighten the screw, you want to turn it to the right, and that pulls the wire down to it. It makes a nice tight bond. You always have to use a screw connection for the ground, but the back you can use the backstab connectors the way that I've done it here. Using the backstab connections on the back of the receptacle get the majority of the hate comments on my videos. So I'm going to go with that. Don't do it. One of the other things you would do is if you're not using these screw terminals, you would screw those in so they're not sticking out. One of the other things that a lot of people will do is they'll take electrical tape and they'll wrap it around the outlet. Now electrical tape certainly is not required, but what it does is it prevents, it covers these screws just in case when you're pushing in wires and a wire hits it like the ground, it would cause a short. And it also protects me when I go to open it up. But remember, rule number one was always you turn off the power before you start working anyway. Now if you do have a receptacle that is wired with the backstabs and you want to remove it, you need to use a fine blade screwdriver and there's a little slot here. 
Just put that in the slot, pull out the wire. So now that I've shown you that using the backstabs are the wrong way to wire an outlet, let me show you the right way. Now the next way that I'm going to show you is using the screw terminals here. Now this is a better approach because it makes a tighter connection that won't come apart. And just like with the ground, I'm going to make a little loop with my, my needle nose pliers. And I'm going to put that loop on the brass screw here. And again, I'm tightening to the right. Now you can see that the insulation is not underneath the screw. So that's a good thing. You don't want the insulation under the screw. The wire is completely under the screw and it is nice and tight. It's not going to come loose. I'm going to do the same thing on the neutral now. Make a loop and tighten it down. Now just like before, any unused screws, be sure to screw in so they're not sticking out. And if you want, you can cover the receptacle, the screws with electrical tape for safety. So that is the preferred method of wiring a receptacle with a single set of wires. Now with the power back on, there's multiple ways that you can test to see that the outlet is hot. The first is with non-contact voltage tester. You can put it near the screws, or you can even put it in the front here. In fact, that sits like that if you wanted to put it here and then go, you can hear it while you go find the circuit breaker if you're working alone. So that's the hot side will always beep. The neutral side will not beep. Another thing that I use all the time with receptacles is a tester that looks like this. After I wire an outlet, I'll plug that in, and I don't know if you can see it, but there are two greens on here. Two green lights indicates that it's wired correctly. This little chart right here tells me um, in any other situation, if I don't get two greens, it tells me what's wrong. Once I have two greens, I know I can cover this up with a receptacle plate and I am done. When you only have one set of wires in your outlet box, I call that the end of the run because it's the last device on your circuit. If you have multiple wires, I call that the middle of the run because power comes into that box and then goes out. And you need to know how to wire that too. Now what I'm going to be using here to connect these grounds is what's known as a grounding wire connector. It is just like a regular wire nut except that it has a little hole in the top. And the benefit of that is that this wire can come out the top. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these two wires, I'm going to twist them together, and then I'm going to put this to tighten both of them down. And you can feel when it grabs. It gets tight, and then you can tug on it, and it doesn't come off. Now I've got a good ground connector there, and I can wire the rest of the outlet. Now, in this case, I can take both of these wires and I can put the two blacks, one under each of these screws, just like I showed you before. Same thing with the whites, I can put them under the silver screws. But that's actually not the best way to do it, according to the feedback I get on my channel. Now what I've done is I've taken two lengths of wire, short wires, about six inches long, and I'm going to create what's known as pigtails. So the way you do that is you connect these three wires together and wire one of them to the outlet. All right, now here you can see I've used three different types of connectors on this receptacle. Now, I wouldn't necessarily do that, but I'm going to show you the difference. First, this is the grounding wire nut that I has, allows the wire to come out through the, uh, the bottom. That's the only used for the grounds, by the way. And this is a regular wire nut, and I twisted the wires together, and I cut them off so that they're not too long. So if you look underneath it, you don't see any exposed wire. The other way is with this Wago 221. This is called a lever nut. And these are really cool because you can remove them easy. They all come off very easily. They hold tight. 
And they're also clear, so you can see that the wire is inserted all the way. So they're certainly a premium price. They are more expensive than wire nuts, but I like using them. They're very easy to use, and they're very reliable. You can see the wires go in all the way. Now, another thing that I just want to point out is that the pigtail coming out from each one of these, coming from this side, it goes to the brass screw, and the pigtail for the neutral goes to a silver screw. Now, one thing you may notice is that I use the bottom screw on the the right side, I use the top screw on the left side. Now that may annoy some people, but there's really nothing wrong with it. Both of these screws are connected by this little shunt right here in the middle. And that little shunt can be removed if you want to, and I'll show that in a future video, but if they're connected with that shunt in between them, it doesn't matter which screw you use, the top or the bottom. So that's the way I would do this. And then push the wires in. Now, just like before, you could put tape around the, the screws, but it is not necessary, especially with a plastic box. It's not that, uh, it's not that much of a risk that anything is going to touch. So now when I restore power back to this circuit, it will allow electricity not only to flow in through that wire, but out through that wire to wherever this wire goes. Now, whether to use the screw terminals or to use pigtails is another big debate on my channel. The pigtails, by far, are what most people suggest using. However, a lot of electricians don't do it because it takes too much time and they're paid by the job. So my entire house is wired with the screw terminals on the side. And some of them are actually using the backstabs. So which way have you wired receptacles in your house? I want to know. Leave me a comment down below. Ask any questions you might have, and I will answer every one of them. Thanks for watching. Give this video a thumbs up if you liked it, and I will see you in the next one. Welcome home. Be sure to subscribe and watch our new series, The Living Flip. Ooh. Look. <laughs> and that has inch and a quarter. It's a little one. That's <laughs>